Ladies and ladies, how are you doing? What is the definition of focus? Because a lot of people seem to be getting it wrong and I used to be getting it wrong. My name is Yusuf Shukri and I am the owner and founder of a marketing agency and I'm documenting my journey from what I'm currently making, which is less than a thousand dollars a month up to $5 million a month. And today I'm going to talk about focus. So I was watching Sam Ovens talk about what focus really is. And I think he got that definition from Steve Jobs. And it was basically that focus is not doing distraction. And distraction is not doing focus. And the way it was explained showed me two things that are very important. First one is inverted thinking is really powerful. Focus was described or was defined through its opposite. By using this concept, I was able to become a better media buyer by finding winning ads through going through bad ads and being one step closer to the ad that works. The second point is it makes everything so clear. I'm sure you've had some times where you were like, I'm going to have this four hour of this four hour of work. You started at eight and you were supposed to finish at 12. And you did finish at 12, but at 12, you are not even halfway through the, your tasks that you were supposed to finish in four hours. And there are two reasons for that. First reason is probably you were a little bit unrealistic about how many tasks you could finish in four hours. But most of the time, it's not that. It's that you were distracted during those four hours of work. Micro focus and macro focus. For me, macro focus is the definition that I just gave, which I got from Sam Ovens or Steve Jobs. The second definition, micro focus, is doing nothing but the thing that needs to be done without being distracted by something else, which kind of sounds the same, but it's a little bit different. Because with micro, the thing with micro focus is that it takes time to get into the focus zone. So I actually mean focus operationally. I, I don't know how to explain it very well, but it's like doing the work, sitting in your computer doing the work. The other type of focus, macro focus, is probably saying no to uh, the woman in the red dress, meaning it's an analogy that Hormozy uses a lot. It means like working on having an agency that works with cl residential cleaning businesses and seeing an opportunity out there for working with kitchen remodelers and saying no to it. That for me is macro focus. But the thing with micro focus is that if you have a four hour work block and you introduce elements of distraction, the thing is that you don't just take the total amount of time that you spent doing the elements of distraction and subtract them from the block of time that you worked. It's more than that. Because let's say you work the first hour, it probably took you 10 minutes to get into your focus zone or flow mode. After one hour, you decided to check Instagram. You probably received the text. Your girl probably sent you a text. You wanted to go to Gmail and check if the client answered you or whatever. What happened now is you broke that flow mode. And now after 10 minutes of checking or after five minutes of checking or even after three minutes of checking, you want to go back to work. And so it's going to take you another 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, to get back into the, the, the flow zone. Now you're gonna work again probably for 40 minutes and then you're gonna walk, want to check something or your phone is gonna ring or whatever and then it's gonna take you off the flow zone then it's gonna take another 10 minutes to get in and at the end of those four hours of work you really worked like an hour and a half and you had another hour and a half just spent doing distraction because people don't check Instagram every hour. People check Instagram every 20, 25 minutes. They check email every 20, 25 minutes. They check their ads every 20, 25 minutes. And I'm talking about myself here. And so for me, what focus really is, macro and micro is doing nothing else but the thing that matters most and the thing that will get you where you want to get. I've always entertained the idea of what if I remove all elements of distraction from my life? And I really mean it. Like, we just define distraction. So when I say now distraction, I don't want you to imagine me talking about going out or me talking about drinking or me talking about doing it, what you would define as distraction, which is something that's not productive. But even productive things are not productive or they don't mean you're focused if they are distractions relative to the thing that you're doing. If you are working, if you have a marketing agency and you're working with residential cleaners and you just decide to start working with brokers, then you have been distracted. Congratulations. And I've done that so many times. I've always entertained the idea of, of being focused all the way through from 8 a.m. in the morning all the way up to 
8 a.m. in the evening. And I just want to see what my life will look like and how much things I will get done. In order for me to know, I'm gonna have to test it out. The other beautiful thing about this, this definition of, of focus is that it, it helps you recognize what are the things that distract you. When you're not doing focus, you're doing distraction. So when I have a day where I'm not really focused, I ask myself, which, which distractions was I doing? And most of the time it's YouTube. And the problem with YouTube is that I have a feed that's really, really interesting for what I want to do or what I like. And it's business videos. It's, um, I don't have those funny 30 second videos on my feed. Although if I scroll a bit too much, I start to find them, but it's mostly business stuff. It's Hormozy, Charlie Morgan, it's psychology stuff. It's really, really interesting stuff. And so by watching them, I'm actually learning something, but I am not advancing towards the goal that I want to advance to. And so it's, it's this, it gives you the illusion that you're doing something productive with your time, but you're not i it needs to be removed and so youtube is my main source my main distraction i've never really tried to remove youtube for two months or 60 days if you think about it, it there's no reason for me to have youtube i mean i know exactly what i need to be doing i need to be cold calling i need to warm up my emails i need to take on sales calls i need to deliver results to uh, the prospects and I know uh, how to do all those things really I really know how to do all those things without watching any YouTube video I have everything I need. I've already done it in the past I just need to crank it up and do it more and I am going to take on this I don't want to call it challenge because I don't want to make it harder than, than it already is but I, I, I want to do this thing where I don't watch YouTube for the next 60 days two good things about it first one is I'm gonna have so many videos to watch after that. I'm gonna have like videos of Hormozy lined up, videos of Charlie Morgan lined up. I'm gonna have videos of Psych Hacks lined up. It's gonna be beautiful. Like I'm gonna gorge on it for like eight hours on a Sunday. The other thing is I am going to see how productive I am going to become. And I already know the answer. It's gonna be way more productive because I am removing the main source of distraction that I have right now. I'm only going to use YouTube now to post videos and update you on the progress and where I am right now. Go do focus.